Hello viewers, Super GT here, back on iRacing. Okay, it's time for me to improve my rather shoddy I rating. Going into this little session here, it was 1 point or less than 1.6, which is pretty low. I, I, I can definitely do better than that. Now, the series of choice for me, quite a lot of the time, is the fixed setup series, so the BMW fixed. And the reason being, you don't have to focus on setups, obviously. So you just get straight into the racing, as chaotic as it often is. But uh, here we go then. For our first race, starting in third position, not too bad. Now, waiting for that pace car. There it is. Waiting for it to suddenly jolt over to the left-hand side. And the race can begin. Okay, let's settle into this. The main idea, really, have a couple of clean races and of course improve our i rating which is as i said quite quite low i could definitely get above two probably 3k if i put some time and effort into it just don't play i rating enough but let's hope that we can have a good session here at interlagos now this series often can get quite uh, aggressive because you have quite a short race it's only about 12 minutes in length so it's about eight laps and when I say about eight laps, I mean exactly eight laps. Unless you will go really slow, I suppose. And then it will be more laps. Or go really quick and it'll be less laps. But for the most part, it's always going to be eight. Okay, so lap one, we've settled into a nice little rhythm here. And maintained our third place. Uh, with a nice uh, gap to the, uh, to the guys behind. 1.3 at this point here. So I'm using the caps overlay. On the bottom right of the screen it also appear on the top left after this first lap uh, for the second race it didn't want to work so that would be the reason why you, you don't see it for that second race but um, as we round out the final turn onto the main straight let's see how the slipstream affects us as we come up the straight here so firmly tucked into the slipstream of the car ahead but then again he has the uh, slipstream of the car ahead of him as we come up in towards turn one just going to park it a little bit on the inside just to make this guy think a little bit and uh, the top two actually go a little bit deep into the first corner and you can see here I've got a much better run on the exit off the center S coming down the back straight now this is an advantage and a disadvantage of having a fixed series the fact that you're having the same car so it's sometimes quite difficult to overtake looking up the inside and okay, so actually he goes actually really go. deep on the brakes manages to keep the position so I could have gone for lunge of the millennium, but actually he would have braked a bit later and actually probably would have kept the position anyway. So we're still in third. But at this point of the race, looking like we're on the front foot, going for second here for sure. And uh, all, the, all, the, all the while, uh, the leader just uh, looking in the mirror and just waiting for the carnage to unfold between the pair of us. And this is something you have to be really careful about in iRacing because I'm so used to playing Gran Turismo, that's my main game. But the, the, you know, the physics of collisions and that kind of thing is a lot different. You know, Gran Turismo, you can get away with side and side contact and it really doesn't affect the cars too much. It's very easy to control the car in that situation. But in iRacing, of course, you get the, the 1X, the 4X, whatever it is, and the cars don't respond well to contact at all. So you really have to be a lot more careful with your, with your overtaking and just trying to gauge that difference is part of this experience today. Just trying to make sure I don't do anything really stupid. I'm just trying to change my approach from Gran Turismo, which requires a slightly different driving style. We're going into turn one, you see again this guy a little bit wide at the first apex, and that's going to cost him through the second and then the third apexes. And once again, we're going to go fully into the toe here, down the back straight, down towards turn number four. Put out to the left hand side just before the 100 meter, ma uh, uh, I was going to say mating board, braking board, should I say, Jesus. And uh, once again, couldn't quite get the job done on the brakes as uh, he sweeps around the outside and maintains his second. A couple of laps later, um, we are on lap number six now. It does tell you the lap bottom right-hand side of the screen at the bottom of that little panel there. And you can see uh, it's my turn to make the mistake now to turn one and immediately I lose a good three quarters of a second. A little bit later on though, um, the race kind of stable here not quite on these guys still just about hanging on by a thread 
This is the end of lap 7, so there's only one more lap to go after this. Coming down towards Jun Sao, or Jun Kao, everyone will correct me in that, I'm sure. And, well, I, I, I failed to correct myself and get absolutely wasted at the final corner. Just, just using too much curve. And, again, another difference, you know, eye racing is not as forgiving in, in that respect. So bouncing over the curbs, couldn't quite control the car. And just really, really annoying mistake to make. After what was looking like a solid race, even if I just finished third there, that would have been a good performance, I think, just to bring it home in where we started the race. But um, we, we dropped down to seventh place now, so we lost quite a few positions there. Unluckily for me, that spin kind of, I don't know, didn't really turn out to be a good spin, if that makes sense. Sometimes you can spin and end up facing the correct way and you can keep a lot of momentum. But that one, I like, kind of awkwardly went sideways and then had to uh, do a, a thousand point turn to get in the correct direction again. That was unfortunate, but we have a nice battle here. We can still gain a position. On your right. Coming up the hill then, side by still side, there. there he is. Brief glimpse, and he, right. he backs out, as you can see in the mirror. So he didn't fancy going in there side by side. As uh, was mostly ahead, he could have perhaps still gone for it. Uh, but we move up a position. Could we potentially gain one more? But, you know, I suppose you never know in, in this, because if people have damage... Their car is going to be uh, slow on the straight and you can sometimes pass people because of that. Uh, so we've got to get as close as we possibly can uh, just to give ourselves a chance and then maybe this guy has damage, you never know. So you've always got to give yourself that opportunity. As we come up the main straight then, for the final time, it's going to be, yes, uh, you, you guessed it, a sixth place as I'm not close enough here to go for this pass. So absolutely bottle the podium and <laughs> come, to, come through eventually to finish in a majestic sixth position. I mean, who, who would have guessed um, Steve Alvarez Brown would finish in sixth? But there you go. Okay, so here's a, a look at that potential overtake. I mean, it was going to be a bit of a, a dive because I wasn't really alongside. So I, I braked where I had to brake to meet the apex. It would have required quite a big lunge from there. But uh, having a look at the results, we, we do improve. Um, our class C 4.99 and uh, I rating going up to nearly 1600 so a bit of an improvement there hello viewers super GT here okay we move on to the next race now this one really annoyingly for me I made two mistakes in qualifying you only you only get two laps to qualify first one um, just just way too wide and Obviously, this corner is my absolute nemesis in life as um, we spin out in a similar fashion to, to how we did in that first race. And uh, on the second lap, uh, just taking too much curve, and that's a 1x, and then that disqualifies your lap in qualifying. So that's unfortunate because I know I can do a 29 easily um, in qualifying here. So just cheering myself up with a bit of uh, gear change music. Let's see what we can do then from the back of the pack. 19th. Look at all the big boys here. We get a good launch actually. Uh, as the lights go green, immediately getting the jump on that guy who is, who is in front of us in our line. Now coming up into turn one, very narrow. Can't really see anything apart from 50,000 big boys and one massive big boy on my bonnet out of nowhere, teleporting himself in front of my car, a very awkward turn one there, as uh, I couldn't even really fathom exactly where that guy came from, he came from another dimension, couldn't quite decide if he wanted to be in this dimension or the shadow realm, eventually ended in the left shadow side. realm, massive lunge from this guy behind, Clear and uh, he's, he ends up spun out, I've already got 8x, 8x, two car contacts of four each, and um, no, I'm halfway already getting kicked out of this race for contact. Uh, so, got to be a bit more careful, I suppose. But uh, a lot of those hits there were kind of unavoidable, I would, I would suggest. But anyway, we move on. I've gained a good handful of positions. I think I can see four or five people in the mirror. Plus, there's probably a few more further back who got sent to the realm. So, I may well be in about 14th-ish position. Uh, position. Uh, two guys ahead fighting. Can we look for the position here? 
we go to the outside and look for a better exit. Not quite going to happen. I have to get on the brakes a little bit there in the middle of the corner. So good ish first lap. Um, obviously, 8x is not ideal, but we're still going. I don't think I've got any damage. The car seems to be going nicely in this uh, in this straight here. Coming up towards turn one, just uh, analysing what these two guys are going to do ahead of us. Now, the main difference, of course when you're this far, uh, far right. back in the pack as, as, a, as a car spins round Still there. as um, we come through the centre S clear bit right. of contact right. again uh, right. you know, it was a hard one as uh, this right. car just in the middle of the track everyone's uh, spinning uh, avoiding everyone as well so it's all kicking off but the hard thing of course with Still being there. in the middle or the back of the pack obviously the, the best Watch drivers are at the front right side's clear. and okay, it's just all, it's just always more difficult to race in the middle it's just more compact there's more people you have to worry about people in front of you behind you next to you on your bonnet whatever it may be so it's always uh, a lot more difficult racing in the middle and the back of the pack um, and coming through here just an unfortunate bit of contact and we're going to get spun around this race really is going down the drain very fast as we're going to try and rejoin nice and cleanly here without wiping anyone out. Just take another look at that. Because I think he, he went quite wide and I tried to give him the space. And I think he just begun to spin the car off of that kerb at that exact moment. Really unfortunate. I don't know if, it, if, the, if there was contact that caused the spin. Or if the spin then caused another bit of contact. Um, up to 11x now. So this is um, a bit sketchy. We can only afford really to make a few more hits at most but we don't really want to do any if, if at all possible so that guy there potentially damaged and he really bails out in fact looking at his bonnet in the mirror he has definitely been hit at some point as uh, we move up a position I suppose but still a bad lap because we went down a few halfway through okay so ending that one um, 14th position now I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing you know because we started 19 so I, I I, I still suppose you know we've gained places from that starting position but let's try and get a clean fast lap in here as uh, we try to hunt down the guys ahead so Brian in 13 two seconds ahead if we can just try and get that gap down a little bit then that'd be great coming down towards turn four we've got a slow car it says on the left who's actually spun over to the right hand side so we all gain another position there so up into 13 now as I said 19 starting 19 if we can get anywhere up into the top 10, I think that would be a good result. But you know, it's still disappointing even if you do get a top 10 or even if you move up quite a lot of positions to have had a few incidents, you know. Um, we've had a couple of spins and a couple of bits of contact already. And you, could, you always got to wonder what might have been without those incidents. So coming through this lap, this is actually a fairly decent lap. Uh, the gap to the car ahead is still at two seconds. Or just below now. As we come through the final turn onto the main straight. We're going to skip ahead another lap here. So lap number four we're on now. Uh, still in 13th. So this guy up ahead making a mistake. And that's of course going to cost him a bit of time. Right. So we've got another Go car to fight here. Daniel. And you want to get past the slower traffic as fast as possible. There is a there is a nice group developing. A good three or four seconds up the road. And that is always something I'm going to have my eye upon. And so I'm always analysing the groups up ahead. Perhaps should really focus more on my actual okay, driving I suppose on the straight you can always have a look ahead and see what, what's going on with the guys a couple of seconds ahead of you uh, that guy completely bails out so I'll happily take that position for free okay, so we go up another one there that might be 12th place it will update on the relative after you cross the start finish line now um, going on to lap number 6 now up into turn number 1 slow car on the right apparently so have to look out for that so as we come through the apex, again, we can see that uh, the group that I was talking about a few moments ago is definitely a lot closer now. So I kind of worked with Brian here. I didn't want to fight him too much because I wanted to actually catch up with that group of, uh, up ahead. But eventually we strike, go for a nice move up the inside, get the job done. He didn't really fight it, um, perhaps didn't expect it. Um, but then we get the move done up into 11th place there. And we have a good couple of uh, cars here potentially to overtake. So we started 19th, knocked back a couple of positions, uh, back down to about 14th, 15th, but now sitting in 11th with a good shot here of 10, 9, 8th place um, in this very group. 
And then of course, there are potential other stragglers who might spin out from ahead of this group. Uh, so you could always gain more positions. So coming through is that Glock corner. This this left-hander here, easily flat out. You can use all of this tarmac on the... It's not tarmac, is it? Whatever that is. AstroTurf on the outside on the entry into the final turn. Now this guy clearly has damage. You can see how much slower he's going unless his pedal's broken or something and he doesn't know how to press full throttle. But easily dispatching that, that poor chap as we go ahead, in fact, just looking at the mirror, you can see that he has plenty of damage on the front end of his car. Into turn number one, we are now in the top 10 on lap seven. So two laps to go. Uh, top 10 from 19th, not too bad, with potential here for an eighth if everything goes to plan, which it doesn't always do. As we come down the straight then, I'll be close enough to go for an absolute dive bomb. Daniel Ricciardo will probably argue yes, but I'm going to play it safe here and say no, as that would almost certainly result in death of someone. Now he's got a poor exit here, can we go around the outside? I think we can, he's going to give us the space, and Still into this uh, double right-hander at the top of the hill. Around the outside, is this going to be possible? It can be done. Still there. And deep on the brakes, it actually goes really deep on the brakes. I can't quite see exactly where it is until the last second, and that is, I suppose, disadvantage of having a single monitor set up and just a 32 inch one at that um, I suppose a triple set of monitors would have helped me there see exactly where he was but he keeps the position we're going to get, uh, continue this battle as we sit here in ninth place actually we've, we're already in ninth place what's going on there someone else spun out i didn't quite catch that but the relative is saying we're up in into ninth but we can definitely get eighth here as we come up the the main straight once again drinking game for main straight for anyone who wants to play a bit of that and um, we're going to go for the move here unless he completely blocks me off. White flag, one lap to go. Cross the line to begin lap eight of eight. Pull out to the left-hand oh, side, looking for our braking marker. And unfortunately, I, I kind of there. do hit the brake marker, right. but I lock up the tyres. If you look back at that, my, my braking input was 100%. Way too much. Having to cut the course and uh, yield a couple of positions and a bit of time. So really unfortunate, all that work there to gain positions and then I undo it with one silly move. Um, well, it was right to go for the move, I just executed it badly with my brakes. Um, so there's just another thing I'm going to have to get used to, just threshold braking, braking at around 70% pressure and not going beyond that, otherwise the, uh, the, the tyres lock up and you massively extend your braking distances, you, you end up just going onto the grass realm and grass realm is not a good realm. We still have an opportunity here because remember this car, the one ahead of us, is one that had really poor straight line speed. So if I if I can just get really close to him, uh, coming out of the final turn, there's all, uh, there's all chance here that I could gain this position back and get back into the top ten, which would not be too bad, I suppose. Uh, so coming down through turn eleven, up into twelve, pretty much right on his tail. And this is where things can definitely change. He does have the benefit of the toe of the car ahead. Quite close toe, actually. And you can see here, definitely got a speed advantage. I didn't know what side he was going to go. Eventually, he covered the left. So I'll go to the right-hand side. Still there. And we can eventually get that Clear position left. back. So this race, really, tons of setbacks. But then, still fighting through. And eventually, okay, finishing drive. in 10th place. So, a bit of a topsy-turvy one, that. Um, some good moments and bad moments. This was one of the bad moments, of course. Just a little bit too late on the brakes and too powerful on the brakes. Uh, locking up that inside left it sends you very, very deep into the corner. And, well, there you go. Lost two positions when I could have gained one. A bit unfortunate. And here's that other incident. Around the outside, it was good racing, actually. And uh, going side by side. And, you know, this is the benefit of chase cam, I suppose. I could have seen... I, I just drove into the side of him, really couldn't see it from the cockpit um, but if, in chase cam you can see everything that's why chase cam is best cam. take a look at this then uh, this was turn one this i don't know how he just kind of morphed himself onto the front of my car and then i just dispatch of him like a snowplow and send him off into the realm this was um, some random red bull driver coming out of nowhere and again, benefit of chase cam, I, 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 you can see it easily on chase cam. I should have easily avoided that, but oh well. Now, if you want to see a change in uh, my driving, 
look at this because this is where things really got hammered home. Um, my driving up to this point was kind of mixed. Um, you know, the first race drove well to keep third and then just made a silly mistake. So lots of inconsistency, I'd say. I'll sum it up by saying inconsistent. Moments, good moments, but um, also uh, with, with intermittent bad moments. But this lap is where things really came together. Now I did say before the previous race that I could have definitely have done a 129. In fact, I did a 129 on the first race qualifying, um, a, a very high 129. So I think anything below 90 seconds is good. Um, but this lap really got hooked up, really did get hooked up. And um, eye racing is one of those things that I think you do have to play it quite a, a lot to really get every last tenth out. You, it's not easy just to, to really feel every sort of nuance of the car. You really do have to play quite a lot to really fully understand it and um, I was getting a little bit better with every race and I think this is proof of me getting a little bit more comfortable with the car the way that it drives a bit more confident on the brakes and as we cross the line here we can ignore that I've got another lap to go because I don't beat my time yes it's pole position because we get pole position by one uh, well about half a second by four tenths uh, with a 129.1 which I was really pleased with Really, really good lap that. Uh, quite close to a 28, which is pretty solid pace around here in this car. Okay, pace car over to the left-hand side. We control the speed of everyone from pole position. Let's go and get this job done then. Now, I've learned, I hope, from my first two races. Um, I just need to be a bit more consistent. I mean, I just said it. I'm not consistent enough. Just making the odd mistake here and there, and especially on the brakes. Through turn one, it was a mistake actually, going a little bit too deep on the brakes. You can see in the mirror the guy very close behind. I'm going to go defensive all the way to the left hand side, force him to the right hand side. Right. I'm technically the fastest car here by virtue Hold of getting pole position. And right. I want to keep this position at the front of the race. I want to control it from the front. It's actually quite a hard race to overtake on if you're not, um, if the guy ahead isn't making mistakes, is, you know, is what I found, especially in that first race. I couldn't quite get past the guy in second because he wasn't doing anything notably bad. Um, obviously in that last race things were a lot different because there was a massive pace difference with a lot of the guys I was around. Um, but this one, I'm going to try and control this one from the front and just have a nice solid race. And this is where a lot of practice comes in, something I've noticed about sim racing. Um, and it's probably true of most sports to be honest, or most tasks you could say. When, when you've really practiced a lot, pressure and that kind of thing just doesn't really get to you as much so yes we, I've got everyone behind me here but because I know how to drive this track a bit better now I can just focus on that I know where to brake I know what to do and uh, I can kind of just focus on where I need to brake where I need to turn in which gear I need to use and not worry too much about the car behind so the more practice you do the better you are at dealing with the, the pressure from behind this is something I've definitely noticed and it's true of, of most sim racing. Uh, so lap two into turn one, we've taken it rather well, a gap of about 0.5 seconds at this point, but we're, we're gonna skip this story um, because, well, we're gonna skip ahead into the story. And you can see here, just lifting off massively, not risking a spin. Uh, so at this point I had a two second gap. Uh, this is lap number six. But anyway, at the end with a four second gap, we're finally gonna come through and have a nice bit of success. Get in. In, 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 there, Lewis. Get in there, Lewis. Thank well, you very much, uh, Bono. You deserve that so finally, on the third try, we've got a, a, a win. Meanwhile, further back in the pack, uh, check this out. This guy spins out on the apex and sends that guy spinning over. Look at that. Beautiful crash. I'm going to sign him up to R4M, I think, as uh, that was a good, good, good day's work. Uh, so we end up on 1685, we went up 92 I rating on that race, pretty good. And um, setting the fastest lap of the race, so pretty pleased with that. Good progress I think in this session and hopefully we can continue to get over 2k very soon. But there we go, uh, let me know your thoughts as always. I do hope you've enjoyed this video, thank you so much for staying all the way through to the end. And uh, if you want to give us another follow on Instagram and Twitter that would be awesome. Um, but in the meantime, take care, have a nice day, and I shall see you next time. Goodbye.